Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial in camera and lens repair and this time I will continue with my uh, Canon uh, FD100 and uh, 2.8 and I will this uh, yeah this video work with the aperture plates uh, there's nothing wrong with it but uh, I will just show you how you can if there was some um, oil or uh, the aperture was really sticky it's not the case here but <clears throat> I mean there's not much information about those lenses here so um, let's have a look inside and see how it will go so I will just directly jump into it and um, yeah need to take off the uh, front nameplate and uh, I can use this uh, sticky rubber uh, which you can get on the internet uh, but I prefer to actually use the uh, the cones here from Japan Hobby Tool because it's more sticky than this one so but it should be something like 52.8 or something well I could try but yeah Okay, it works. Sometimes they um, they're not so easy to get off. <clears throat> so the nameplate is made of plastic, which you can see here. <clears throat> and then um, there are some retaining rings in here which we need to actually unscrew to get into the uh, into the uh, both the aperture system and the um, the whole lens assembly so i will just for now um, at first move the outer shiny uh, retaining ring here because it's it's so tight so i use my very strong um, uh, yeah compass and for this before I actually um, took it apart I use my uh, my two clamps um, and use the really 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 big <laughs> compass together with two clamps uh, on my desk uh, and tighten it gently there will be a short video about after that here now, <clears throat> since I tried to actually loosen the front lens group, which is extremely tight, uh, I've used a lot of um, of nail polish remover or acetone or alcohol or whatever, but mm, I could not. I simply could not unscrew it. But with the, putting my huge um, compass. And tighten it with two big clamps on my table. Um, this is uh, actually possible to unscrew it, and of course, I use some very sticky uh, gloves from this is from Oxon, uh, which is extremely sticky rubber here. So it's possible to actually um, uh, put it on here and simply unscrew it because it's extremely tight and then that way it's actually um, possible because you cannot hold the, uh, the the lens tool or the compass and on the at the same time hold the um, the lens assembly uh, and unscrew it's simply not possible so this is I have a lot more force to unscrew it so that's a good idea. Hope you like it. <laughs> now, since it's uh, loose, uh, well, if it's not loose, I would just use some nail polish remover, or one could also use acetone, and simply um, add a lot because it was really tight. Um, 
and simply um, add it here around so the uh, nail polish remover will move around here. I have also tried alcohol. Uh, it's a popular alcohol but it doesn't work. May dep it depends on what kind of of um, lock, uh, thread lock they have used. Now, so we can unscrew this. Of course it's loose because I've been into it before. So, and we simply loosen it. And for that I can just continue with my rubber tool here and simply unscrew it. It will be more easy in a way. And it sounds like it's loose at the moment. Set the uh, lens to near end there. And then it would be possible to actually have a good grip on the uh, on the front ring. Here and here you can see the uh, retaining ring and the front ring. There is a gap here, notch. And there is a lock pin here, so the uh, front ring can only sit in one position, and uh, it should be where this notch is, and it goes in line with the um, with the index mark. So that's okay. <clears throat> now, uh, then I will simply continue to the uh, back. So the uh, lens mount, which I already have fixed because it was a bit uh, stuck when I put the lens cap on. But now it works as it should. It will lock, not fully, but it will almost lock when I put the lens uh, cap on here or put the lens on the camera. So now uh, we actually need to see here, take care of the exposed um, lens, front lens element, or I could just put it on a um, rubber tool here, so it will not damage the lens element. So now, uh, we actually need to uh, unlock the, the uh, breeze lock, so I can just use a tool and press on it. And uh, before doing so, we actually ne need to <laughs> set the lens, to, uh, the aperture to 22. So there. And then press the, uh, the aperture lever lock. Uh, I mean, auto aperture <laughs> lever all the way up to here. So it's lock in position. So, and then, to make it much easier, uh, you see, this, the other lever here, will move when I move the bridge ring. So it has to be all the way over to the very end, uh, counterclockwise. And then, uh, I mean almost, because then we have uh, the three screws here, there, and there will be fully exposed and then I can just with a JIS screwdriver um, unscrew the mount in an easy way without anything uh, moving too much hmm. there isn't any thread lock on those screws so it's not a problem and we can just take the last screw here. So, and then now we can actually pull the um, the the uh, lens mount off. And of course, I should have set the the focusing to near end. I mean, not near end. Uh, infinity because then <coughs> we can see what's going on here uh, this pin 
connection to the uh, fork here for the aperture and the auto aperture lever is fully locked here so it will not push on the inside here of the aperture connection pin so now keep it away <coughs> A good thing is, uh, do not um, uh, pull out the uh, aperture ring itself, because there are two small ball bearings and a, and two springs in here and there. So, um, <clears throat> of course, when I do the next video about the the um, focus system, I need to take it fully apart but for now I will just set it to near end and then I have my um, I have my front uh, retaining rings that actually hold the lens assembly in place so now I can take off the the lock screw here on the side and um, it's a tiny one and I will say just a few words the um, the front ring I mean the front here uh, there are two screws actually one on the very front and one deeper in which I will show you sooner the front uh, which have this shape uh, screw this shape of the screw head and the other one which is sit uh, deeper into the into the uh, lens bearer uh, and it's actually a screw that uh, used to lock the lens assembly in position <coughs> of the focus assembly hope it makes sense <laughs> so keep this tiny screw in a safe place so now I can actually use my uh, lens tool, another tool, to actually get the this uh, retaining ring here, the notch here and there. And when unscrewing this, the whole um, lens assembly can come out with the aperture system included. And for that, there's tool another tool here <coughs> and I will use this old <laughs> compass again and I already adjusted into correct um, position there it was also extremely tight so I also add some uh, which I can show I also add a lot of uh, thread lock here. Just add it in. It will it will move around the retaining ring and soften the thread lock or whatever they have used. So now I can actually unscrew it counterclockwise, and it can sit tight. <laughs> it's not the case in here because I've been into the lens and investigate how it looks so I can just uh, sometimes not easy and sometimes it is so whoa 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 come on so I'm sure it And when it says click, yeah, there, now it's free. So, and then I can simply just pull the lens assembly out of its place. It looks like this. And again, <coughs> as I show you, the um, just take off the retaining ring here 
as I show you the other screw that sits here is the lock screw I mean goes into this uh, notch here so it will prevent the uh, lens assembly from moving at all so this is just the focusing assembly which I will I will not put it all in but will continue with the um, focus assembly in the next video so this is why I not uh, assembled this lens it will be in the next video so now here we have the the um, lens assembly with the aperture system and um, just a quick note about this if when you assemble it if this uh, the fork here and this uh, ring the cam ring here has come all the way over to here and you try to assemble uh, I mean when you assemble the put the lens assembly into the uh, focusing assembly again and if the aperture doesn't work it, it you cannot step down or make it more open this could be the problem because um, this part here which I don't know the name because I do not have a repair manual has to come out here and then press the the um, this cam ring back to position again it could be the because if you see here I will stop down and then I can fully open the aperture so it, it works as it should now I will continue with taking off the um, the uh, retaining ring that holds the front lens itself because I need to come into another <laughs> another retaining ring which is in here and uh, that actually hold the whole front lens group in the um, lens housing so I will take another tool <coughs> Of course I have been into it and therefore the uh, this retaining ring is quite loose but I will show it anyway how one can come into it so maybe um, it could be that that the actually the whole front lens group come loose and then I can use my rubber tool here to simply unscrew it but in if it was the if it was the case that the uh, retaining ring would not come loose I mean here it's actually come loose and then I can uh, then use another lunch tool compass <laughs> because there are two holes here there and there it's not really holes it's just a uh, boring uh, they have drilled some not fully in but then if it's tight and it was in my case here uh, when I try to actually uh, open the the lens I mean into the aperture I would again use a lot of nail polish remover and um, but it's it's a problem to come in here so this is why I need to actually I can just show it uh, I will simply use one of my lens tool here and simply press the cutting board really really flat because then you can see it's more flat not like the other end it will make it easier to actually apply the the nail polish remover into here 
in the gap here um, all the way around the uh, front lens group and it will also make it easier if it's uh, possible to unscrew it and then just do so and just continue to unscrew it so there and now it's actually free so there and this is how it looks inside the aperture assembly and this is the whole the front lens group I will not do anything about the lens uh, in this video uh, because the lens element actually looks really good so there is no need for disassembling it and that's it will maybe be a not in another video but not in this case and I can just uh, see here I'll use the other one which will be maybe better and tighten the lens element no, <laughs> not the lens but the retaining ring so now put it aside because uh, we will not use the uh, it for anything. <clears throat> so the next step will actually be to unscrew the lens, the uh, aperture assembly in here, and simply pull the whole uh, aperture assembly out, and also uh, coming to the plates. Uh, in here. So before doing anything <coughs> it's important because since there is no repair manual for this lens set a mark down here as I did down here before you actually unscrew the three screws around here. It will uh, prevent from <coughs> uh, I mean, it's, it will not be necessary, when you set a mark correct, it will not be necessary to make any adjustment for the aperture after that. This is why it is so important. Um, and then I can just unscrew the, I simply make my, this, uh, my dentist tool which is very pointy and sh sharp and simply make scratch in the, um, aluminium in here uh, since I already did that and also on the side inside the tube here so the two marks has to sit in line because then the aperture assembly sits correct now next thing is unscrew those uh, three screws around here. The holes are big because it will make it possible to make any adjustment. As you can see the screws not the big diameter is very small something two millimeter or so but the holes in here are actually big. Oh. They are actually much bigger than the screw diameter because then when the adjustment you can make it slightly to one side or the other so and now it's actually free put a finger in here so we can turn it over and see what's happened here so now uh, we can turn this this uh, cam ring all the way over to here so there is no tension on this uh, part here so and then it should actually be possible to 
push the aperture assembly out, we can use this pin here and um, make it easier. Or we can just use a tweezer in here and simply lift it out. Or wiggle a little. Where is my dentist tool here? It's good with a short uh, pointy tool here. Then dig under it and then you can simply lift it out. It's in this way here. And here it is inside. There is no oil in here. But if there was one need to actually clean the whole uh, barrel here with the isopropyl alcohol, 99% or something like that. Now, here we see the naked uh, aperture assembly. Really nice, mate. And actually to get into the blades, we need to take the tension away of this uh, tiny spring and for that I will use a uh, really sharp knife look-alike thing tool um, and simply go into the spring a little and lift it out it will also be easy when it sits in one end and you can just Pull gently in the spring and put it over this tiny post. So now it's loose. And then we can just take off the spring. Nice and easy. And now we are free to actually um, go into the blades itself. So there are three screws here, there, there and there. There's no need for make any marks because uh, it cannot move at all. The holes are countersunk here for the screws so it will just be quite easy to unscrew it. So you can see here So there, and the last screw. Have a good grip here on the uh, on both sides because when <laughs> when this plate is loose, all the blades will fall out. So uh, be aware of that. Or you could see this plate is actually moving. So have a good grip here. And actually keep one screw on the screwdriver because when you put it back into again you will uh, you will need to uh, make it easier to just grab a screw and screw the plates together so now to make it easy just a little uh, I will use a um, one of those rubber tool and simply place it on the um, on the one side here to make it easier when taking off the blades. So it will be something like that, and with a tweezer, simply lift off the plate. So it is. It looks nice and clean. And now we are actually facing the aperture blades itself. Maybe we should zoom in a little. And it should be possible to actually move the this uh, ring and close the aperture. It's 
it's really a nice mechanism. So, so now open the plates. Um, I mean, open the aperture <laughs> and take out the this uh, the moving part, and it will simply lift up the the plates here, and it's actually free and then you can see this is how it looks nice and clean so um, if I want to clean the plates um, I would use some isopropyl alcohol 99% and simply drop the whole thing into a bath of uh, cleaning fluid. So we will do so. <laughs> so now um, <clears throat> I will speed up the process uh, because there is no need for uh, show it in slow I mean normal speed when cleaning the I'll just show part of it. I will use my special mate tweezer which is really handy for for um, putting in the plates in in the uh, in the moving ring or in the uh, oh, it should be quite easy if I can just grab the plate as you can see here and simply wipe off off the the rest of the is a propyl alcohol on both sides <coughs> So now, <clears throat> if there was any, um, if there was um, any oil film in here, I would use just use some of the uh, um, isopropyl alcohol and simply clean it off in here. But there, there isn't any, so there's no problem with that. What I also used. Uh, want to do is if there is any oil in here you should also clean that ring and of course this part here should also be clean but in this case there is nothing so I will say that's fine away with that and now time to put the plates in again it can sometimes be be a challenge and uh, it could also be here I don't know yet because I haven't have the plates out but I will put the um, this ring as I remember all the way over to here and simply stop to put in the blade to see how it looks um, it could be the other way around I don't know but the plates can only sit in one position so we take one place here Let's see how it will go there all the plates are the same so there shouldn't be any problem <coughs> So now you can see here it works. When we move the ring, the plate will move too. So it has to sit something like that when you put in the plates. This angle here should be that and not too much over to here. So it will move that way. So not any further than this. So I will simply just put in the blade and I will use, uh, I just try to use this lens sucker 
is a tiny one. I bought it at uh, Nordson, but you can probably get them somewhere. Uh, maybe Japan Hobby Tool have one. But it's quite easy to put on here and lift up the blade. And uh, oh gosh, the ring has moved a little. And simply put it on here. Just need a tweezer to put it correct on. Challenge will be the last plate that goes in because it uh, then we have to move some plates. Uh, so there, here we go. <clears throat> then press the pin down. So you can better control how the 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 two pin actually goes in the two holes. Well, you see here, there is a little problem because I need to move the ring a little to open this hole here to get the next blade in, and it, the same will happen for the last blade put in here, have the right angle here, so it goes in here, so there, and move it a little, so now we have almost all blades in, so we just need the, the last one, but then I have to move this ring any further so I can expose the the last hole over here. So gently move it. So now it should be <laughs> possible in a way. Some lenses are more difficult to actually do this and some some are not so yeah what do you say <laughs> not so hard to put in maybe you should take the other side here and maybe if I can lift up this part here with the tweezer so there and maybe push it under it they are really really thin so there Now all blades are in, and then one can move the pin here, and everything works as it should. So, and now I can add this on again, <coughs> and it should sit like here. So. No, it's not correct. This has to sit in the opposite way. It will say something like here. Because I have my gap over here that goes into the to this pin here. Which you can see here on the other side. It will move. 
and it will also move the gap uh, the the aperture here when we move it so you can see here there it uh, will actually move as it should so now I can add my screws in one screw at first so it would be something like there catch the holes here oh gosh <laughs> put this bring in this is why it, it is a good thing to add a screw on the screwdriver before you mm, I mean so you have one hand free so now I will just put the screws on here and then we are ready to put the whole thing in the lens assembly so now and the last one Gently tighten the screws so there and this one so so now we are back again and it works as it should oh that's fine then we just need to add the spring here uh, from that post to that and it should be quite easy so just put it on here there and with a knife shape something like that tool uh, simply cut into the I mean not cut but press it down in the spring and then put it over the post or the pin whatever and now it's back on where it should be so now I can simply put it <coughs> into the the uh, housing this pin has to go through the um, the hole here the gap here and uh, this uh, uh, well <laughs> gap here has to go uh, with this um, yeah I don't know what's its name but since I do not have a repair manual for this but uh, I can just put it in and uh, where should it yeah I'll just use a tweezer here on this pin catch the screw holes where they are then align where it has to sit something like that should be two I mean three holes then grab a screw and put it in they have used some kind of thread lock or varnish around the holes here so I'll do the same uh, but I will use uh, Loctite 222 for that um, it's the softest of those the thread locks so oh, <laughs> just a tiny drop yep and I will only add it on the screw head So just do so. I mean, not on the screw, but I mean on the side of the of the screw. One can just wipe away a little, and then put it in. Just make to have a look on the mark which I set in the beginning. 
and one can simply uh, correct it so it should sit as it was before I took the took out the aperture assembly oh, I was a bit over just so and then I can simply gently just lightly tighten the screw and do the same again <clears throat> Now and the marks, it's correct. So there, and the last screw goes in. <laughs> Gently tighten it. So and then we are back on track but we need to one thing which uh, will make it to work correct because now there is any movement when I turn the cam here because it needs to actually when move this cam here this part here should also move and actually open the blades so I need to move this out here hold it and um, move the cam ring here so it's on the other side and release and then you can see now the aperture plates move as is they should and also this pin is working as they should so that's really good so that's uh, <clears throat> I just need to put in the front um, lens group. Oh, there was some dust in here, which I just need to blow out and it disappear. Then put in the front lens group and say that's all fine. Catch the thread click and simply screw it in and I will just use my um, rubber tool to actually screw it in and tighten it Next, just tighten the uh, retaining here on the front. So, there. I say that's all fine. Everything is correct in place. And uh, say, okay, the aperture is working again. In the uh, next video, I will uh, uh, show how you actually this assemble the focusing system because I mean the uh, focusing focusing ring focus ring <laughs> is a bit tight as I uh, I would like it is more um, more likely movement so <clears throat> see you next time hope you can use the info here in this uh, part of this video so Bye-bye.